This prologue is not a poem. It is an act of welcome. It announces that people present reject the terms of a debate that criminalizes human movement. It is a declaration this night in Shepherd's Well of solidarity. It says that we have started, that we are starting out, that by the oldest action, which is listening to tales that other people tell of others told by others, we set out to make a language that opens politics, establishes belonging where a person dwells, where they are now, which is to say where we are now, walking in solidarity along an ancient track, that we come back to the geography of it, north of Dover, that where the language starts, now longen folk to Goan on this pilgrimage. In June, not April, and with the sweet showers far behind us, though with the birds singing and people sleeping with open eye. And what we long for is to hear each other's tales and to tell them again, as told by some hath holpen. Walking, so pricketh him nature, not believing the stories our officials tell. Because we know too much about what goes unsaid and what we choose to walk for is the possibility of trust in language to hear the unsaid spoken and then repeated, made unambiguous and loud, set out over a landscape, gathered step by step, as by virtue of walking which we call our commons, every sap vessel bathed in moisture, and what that commons calls for is what these stories sound. Of crossing, for to seek and strange strands in moments of emergency, one that they were seek, of tribunals where the unsaid goes unspoken, lines of questioning no official has written down, people present by video, answers mistranslated, as outside by the station at the dead of morning, as the young sun rises, woken in their homes, people are picked up and detained. Routinely and arbitrarily, in every halt and heath, under the sun while small fowls make and melody, and why we walk is to make a spectacle of welcome, this political carnival across the weald of Kent, people circulating, making music, listening to stories people urgently need said. And said, and said again, stories of the new geography, stories of arrival, of unaccompanied minors, of people picked up and detained, of process and mistranslation, networks of visitors and friends, this new language we ask for, forming, strung out along the North Downs way. Which makes it a question of scale. Consider just the scale of the undertaking. Chaucer's pilgrims crossing Palatai and Turkey and Rus, across the great sea, which is the Mediterranean, dark these days, not like wine, crossing through Flandre, through Artois, crossing the water at Picardy, and all the while finding stories, and then all of them gathering one night in London. And so the host says, since we're walking, why don't we tell each other tales? And so they do, out of Southwark. And what comes out of Southwark is a whole new language of travel and assembly and curiosity and welcome to make his English sweet. That's why Chaucer told his tales, how badly we need English to be made sweet again, rendered hostile by act of law, so that even friendship is barely possible, there as this Lord was keeper of the cell, so we might actually talk and in talking come to understand the journey. Tender, says the poet, to Canterbury they wend. Tender, to hold, from the French tendre, from the English for listening to a story as it is said, to attend, tendre, and then writing it down because it isn't written, because the hearings in the British immigration system are not courts of record. So there are no stories, and people leave as if there never had been stories, and so nobody who reaches a verdict has a real story with which to contend. So now we are telling them en masse, and people will listen in sondry lawns, and specially from every shire's end. But this prologue is not a poem. It is an act of introduction, bathed 
every vein in such liqueur, and all the introduction can do is set the tone, albeit the tone is everything, and the tone is welcoming, and the tone is celebratory, and the tone is courteous, and the tone is real, and every step sets out a demand, and every demand is urgent, and what we call for is an end to this inhuman discourse. And so we stop this night, and the host steps up, and he says, listen to this story, Wan that April with his surer's suit. And the room goes quiet, and a voice starts up, and then the language alters, sweet, tender, pear said to the root. <laughs>